10 years ago that the Pasadena City Council came to the Rose Bowl Operating Company and asked us to identify a golf program for the youth of Pasadena and the Pasadena area. And we did quite a bit of study and quite a bit of research and looking at various golf programs for the youth. After that study, we became convinced and were assured that the program for us was the National First Tee program. Actually, it had nothing to do about learning the game. It had to do, I think, what we were all struck by, was the learning lessons, the core values that is represented by the first tee. And we had high hopes for this program, but 10 years later, as we're gathered here today, we couldn't possibly have imagined the growth and the impact on the youngsters and in the community. You've heard the numbers from 40 first participants to 40,000. Staggering and wonderful growth. And we also couldn't have envisioned that when we would be here tonight celebrating the 10th anniversary, that we would have the honor of having as our keynote speaker uh, one of the great sport leaders in the history of sport, Mr. Peter Ubrall. And it's my pleasure tonight to be able to introduce Peter. And when I was asked uh, if I would if I would uh, take on this wonderful assignment, I said I would I would gladly do so because Peter and I have had somewhat of a connection through our careers and through our lives. Uh, we were both at San Jose State in the mid and late 1950s. Graduated from San Jose State. I don't know that we really met one another. We don't remember that, but we were both working weekend jobs, so we might have been working, waiting tables or doing something during that period of time, because that's how we both got through San Jose State. And then I recall quite vividly in 1984 at a meeting in Tampa, Florida, of the major league owners, where uh, I was present along with the Dodger owner, Peter O'Malley, for the Major League Baseball owners to select a new commissioner. And on March the 4th of 1984, the owners came to a unanimous decision that Peter Uberoff was the man for the job. Now think about that. That's March of 1984. There was no person in the world who had a busier task than Peter had at that time. He was the leader of the Los Angeles Olympic Organizing Committee. And he took on the assignment, as I recall, on his own terms, as he would, and then began serving in October. But that when you think about the accomplishments of Peter and the Olympics, and in the stadium right behind us, the, the great soccer finals of the 1984 uh, Olympics, on a record-setting crowd uh, that is uh, historic uh, in its nature. But for all that uh, Peter has accomplished in his business career, in his life, Time Magazine Man of the Year, in addition to San Jose State, 12 honorary degrees, there's nothing in my mind that identifies him more than the impact that he has had on others and particularly on the youth. The uh, 84 Foundation from the 84 Olympics continues to thrive, continues to serve uh, the Southern California community and other communities. And the Peter and Ginny uh, Uberoff Foundation, and Ginny is here tonight, bless her, uh, has been a tremendous uh, for youth and for uh, some wonderful, wonderful causes. So I have a great honor tonight uh, in introducing my longtime friend, Peter Ubrough. 